The Macra Terror, the seventh serial of Doctor Who's fourth season, first broadcast in four parts from the 11th of March to the 1st of April 1967. Now, this story in its original form is completely missing. Like, it was evidently either lost or destroyed in the 1960s. However, in 2019, it was announced it would be recreated in animation, which I have just finished watching through. Now, the first thing that I did actually notice about this particular story is that they've got a new title sequence, which it's, it's not a terribly big departure from the previous one, but it's a bit more intricately detailed, and it does feature Patrick Chatton's face now in the mix. However, one detail that I noticed that I thought at first was a mistake was that while they've got the new title sequence from 1967, they're still using the original orchestration of the theme music from 1963. Now, I thought that was an error at first in the animation process, but it has now been pointed out to me that this was actually still the case in 1967. They continued to use the original orchestration of the theme until part two of the following story, The Faceless Ones. So I thought it was a mistake. Turns out it's actually just a small detail that was left in. Now, in this particular story, the second Doctor, played once again by Patrick Troughton, as well as his companions Polly Wright, played by Annika Wills, Ben Jackson, played by Michael Craze, and Jamie McCrimmon, played by Fraser Hines, they've just seen on the TARDIS scanner an image of the future, which Jamie says is dangerous because, second sight, that's always going to be a problem. But what they see in the future is seemingly giant crabs or giant insects have taken over. They eventually end up landing the TARDIS on a planet that's not too dissimilar to Earth, and they end up encountering a man named Medoc, played by Terence Lodge, who is trying to run away from a civilization. However, it's promptly caught by a man named Ola, played by Gertrude Klauber, a name I've almost suddenly butchered, I apologise, and is taken back. Now, they are, for capturing Medoc, the Doctor, Polly, Ben and Jamie are also taken back to the colony and are praised as kind of heroes. They're praised as good people and are brought to kind of enjoy the kind of luxuries of the colony. Now, the colony live effectively in a giant refinery and they're seemingly mining gas from caves down below, sending it back up and it's not entirely sure for what particular reason. And the pilot, played by Peter Jeffrey, announces that they are to can be treated well. However, it soon becomes clear that not everything is quite as it seems, as Jamie is stirred in the night by mysterious voices that he hears coming over the intercom. And the voices are telling them that the next day they will be sent down to work in the mines and they will enjoy it and they will do things and work for the colony. And while Jamie is is still in the night and is able to resist these, and Polly is broken, is woken up by the Doctor, thus manages to resist them, Ben ends up falling for the mind control, and he is... He, the next day he becomes really different. He becomes devoted to the colony and tries to call out the Doctor and co for their crimes, and says that they should be doing things for the colony, which the Doctor realizes it's not the original Ben at all. Now, this apparently is actually a real thing. I mean, I don't know if it's used so much for mind control nowadays, but the idea of listening to kind of a voice or an audio tape in your head in order to remember things, apparently it's a common revision technique used by people in exams or jobs and the like, that if you listen to something while you sleep, then you're more likely to pick it up than if you just listen to it on your own because your brain is less busy while you're sleeping and therefore takes a bit more time to kind of soak it in, which I think is what they're going for. Now, ultimately, the pilot, Medoc, Ola, there's also a mysterious voice known as Control. That's voiced by Dennis Gocher. Once again, I apologise if I mispronounced that name. And he is constantly kind of telling the colony to kind of do things and be certain ways, which the Doctor and co. realise isn't quite right. But what they eventually discover is that Control isn't actually a real person at all. Well, he is, but he is being controlled himself by seemingly giant crab-like creatures, or giant insect-like creatures, known as the Macra. And 
basically they are causing they are kind of controlling the population and by getting people to listen to these things they can get them to kind of overlook certain things about the colony that the macro don't want them to know for example the macro don't 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 want the colony to even know that they exist but like they just believe that they're mining gas just to mine it just for the good of the colony which under the macro's control they now believe the macro don't exist they're saying there are no macro the macro do not exist however me doc the prisoner who was trying to escape before he is apprehensive about it and he actually finds out with the Doctor the Macra do exist. And it is quite cool to see. Now, one thing I will say about this particular animation of the story is that I do remember saying with previous stories, like, uh, with the newer animations, I did feel it was slightly different. Now, here's the thing. The two, the stories that I'm going to take from this to compare are The Power of the Daleks and The Reign of Terror. Now, the Reign of Terror still mostly exists in live-action form, however, a few key pieces are missing and have been recreated in animation, like with a load of other stories. And the thing that I've said with these before is that the new animation, I always felt that while the new animation was a bit, kind of, bit more basic, a bit more flat, it did flow a lot better. It was kind of a lot slicker. But I remember from The Power of the Daleks, while I felt most of the human characters looked a little flat, the Daleks had still felt, looked pretty cool, and they managed to get a really good 3D effect on them. But I did feel that the humans were a little flat. What, whereas with The Reign of Terror, or with other stories that only had one part animated, I felt with them that Yes, the animation is a little bit more jerky, but at the same time it's a lot more detailed. I mean, you can see the kind of different facial textures, kind of the different shadows on the faces. That's what I kind of felt from the start, that the new animation moved better but was a bit more flat, whereas the older animations, they were a lot more detailed, but they were a little bit more janky. However, the Macro Terra, I think, is a kind of mixture of both of them. It's not quite perfect yet, but there were moments, especially seeing the Doctor at night in Shadow, where the animation was a lot slicker and it did look a lot more three, three-dimensional. Like, I could see the Doctor partially obscuring the shadows and see the various kind of shadows on the faces. So they've evidently worked it, and I've evidently come up with something that's actually really cool to watch. Something that still feels 2D, but at the same time has elements of 3D, and I think it's actually really good. Now, this story also caused me to go back and re-watch one of my personal favourite New Who adventures, that being Gridlock, the third episode of Series 3 from 2007. Now, having said I was going to watch the Macro Terra recently, I, people did point out that Gridlock kind of did the Macro disservice. Like, in the Macro Terra, these are creatures that, they don't necessarily talk, but they're kind of talking through humans and through computers, and they actually managed to seem like a credible threat, whereas in Gridlock, they're a lot more kind of dumbed down. I mean, as the Doctor says, they must have devolved down in so I'm just beasts in Gridlock. But at the same time, Gridlock, for me, was always a personal favourite. I, I always enjoyed that particular story, and just having the macro there just made it a cool little detail. But seeing their original adventure, I can see why people consider Gridlock to be a disservice to the macro. And the macro terror... For as long as I waited to get it, I actually think this is a really good second Doctor story, and I feel that if you can get a hold of a copy, definitely watch it through. You'll enjoy it. So there you go, that's my quick little thoughts on the Season 4 episode, The Macro Terror. Anyway, what do you think of it? Let me know down in the comments. Till next time, see ya.